What's up everybody, AnimeXU, and in this video, I'll be adding a new part to the What If Naruto The Renegon series. Now, like I said in my last part, this is kind of a special, I think it should be longer than usual, because in this What If, I will be covering the entire Naruto The Last movie. If you guys want this to go to Boruto, I'm going to need this actually to get to 6,000 likes. I know that's a lot, well that's kind of daunting, but hey, if I'm going into Boruto and I'm entering that anime, then I'm going to need a lot of likes for it. Anyways, just like usual, I'll be recapping the last part of the what if, then jumping to the new material. So, without further ado, let's get started. In the last part of this what if, we kind of saw Naruto get brought back to life by Hagoromo, be kind of brought up to date on everything that happened in all of ninja history, and basically become Jesus on Earth, Heaven on Earth, God on Earth, whatever you want to call him. Naruto was pretty strong, and Naruto stopped the war before it even happened, and we kind of left off with the basically them going to the three-year time skip, or yeah, the two to three-year time skip, whatever, wherever the Naruto the last is placed, and we left off with Naruto being worried about something that he's sensed. Now, like I said, Naruto has entered Sage Mode, and Naruto is sensing something that strikes fear even in his powerful heart. Ah, shoot. Naruto then looks at Sasuke and tells him to follow him, and they both run into the Hyuga area of the village, hoping that he was wrong somehow, and maybe Hinabi was just messing around and just outside of his sensory abilities, but his suspicions are confirmed when he hears a scream that sounds a lot like Hanabi, and him and Sasuke both have over there to the noise and see a man carrying Hanabi over his shoulder, and his minions all charge them. Naruto instantly blitzes past all of these minions, one-shotting them with Sasuke in close pursuit, and Naruto leaps at this weird-looking person and stops time. Naruto looks over to see Sasuke and sees him moving as well, and they wombo combo this man holding Hinabi, and then time continues as per normal. Maybe I should explain something to you guys that are curious why Sasuke was moving in stop time, just in case you weren't able to pick up on it. It is due to Naruto's Rinnegan being implanted within Sasuke's eye socket in the last few parts, which I do recommend you go watch if you haven't seen already. And this basically, you know, Sasuke having this Rinnegan that Naruto had enables Sasuke not the full ability of time stop, since that is very chakra draining and actually requires more chakra than Sasuke even has, but he can move and stop time and has a very limited, very limited control over the flow of time. Regardless of this, he still has his time space ninjutsu since that is what he personally developed by getting the Rinnegan implanted into his own eye, and he's very hacked out in terms of his moveset. And it can basically even rival Naruto's Shippuden Bower, although at this point Naruto makes that Naruto look kind of like a wimp, like a chump, pretty weak, so Sasuke is weak compared to Naruto, yet Sasuke is still pretty broken in the grand scheme of Naruto scaling. Anyways, after time continues forward, or in the forward direction, Naruto and Sasuke both look at this man and he is almost completely unscathed. This is, this is bad, this is really bad. Naruto at this point in time has never met anyone strong enough to even handle him more than a few sage mode hits, and now this guy tanked them well off guard and didn't stop time with a smile on his face. Naruto then tells Sasuke that he needs to take them somewhere without people in buildings because this battle will require them using some very large scale, powerful jutsu. Naruto, after saying this, turns back to see Toneri and sees his fist within inches of his face, and it's punched so hard that he goes flying and is basically sends his head and his, you know, his brain knocking around inside of his head. He is hit. He's about to hit the ramen shop, but Naruto would rather die than do that, so he's narrowly able to avoid it by pulling himself to a nearby random building using uh, <laughs> Bancho Tenny. Basically, instead of pulling the building to him, he uses it as an anchor to keep him from running into the shop that he loves so dearly. Naruto then looks, and this guy is gone. Naruto jumps back onto the roof where they were fighting, and he sees Sasuke slightly beat and banked up. Sasuke gets up and looks at Naruto, wondering what they should do and what just happened. Like, who just pulled up on them and bodied them? Naruto then punches the ground in a fit of rage as he wasn't all that prepared for anyone to come to Earth and fight at this level. Naruto then tells Sasuke that he has to bring it up with Kakashi since he is the current Kage, and basically bring it up with every other Kage, and they do so ASAP. This leads to them actually hearing about a huge threat that, you know, the Kage had known about for a while. Um, basically, Kakashi says, both moons are heading towards our orbit as we speak, and if these hit the Earth at the same time, Earth along it, with it will be completely obliterated. So, why is this such a huge threat? After Kakashi, you know, talked about the moon threat, this is what Naruto says. Kakashi and the other Kage are confused about this question, but Naruto reiterates. Why is the moon falling a big deal? Me and Sasuke could just blow it up. 
Even you, Kakashi, should be able to calm me away that smaller moon if you charge enough. I know you try to hide it, but I know you've been training a lot recently. You're trying to catch up to me and Sasuke, aren't you? The rest of the Kage hear this and burst out laughing, think that this is some sort of joke or it's impossible for any one single person to blow up the moon. Naruto then just laughs, saying that anyone that can't perform something on those levels should get up the title of being Kage, somewhat joking, somewhat taking it very seriously. The laughing stops as they are, you know, not fond of being joked about. Alright Kakashi, I'll ask. The moons are a diversion, right? The moons are sent at us, thinking that we'll prep for that, and then something else will be sent down here to kill us. Kakashi nods, as, nods grimly as he says this. Good job catching on, Naruto. The moon isn't the only thing attacking us right now. Right now, we have signs of two chakra levels that rival yours in its vastness, but they seem to be somewhat close to each other. In fact, they seem to be in a very close vicinity to each other. Naruto scoffs at this, since it's bad enough that there's another one of him, or another person at the level of him that he'll basically have to go all out against. But now there are two of them, and at least in terms of chakra, have more than him when they combine. Naruto then gets up and tells them to leave the moons and new enemies to him, Sasuke, Sakura, and Hinata, and Naruto gets up from the table, smiling, saying that Team 7 is now back in action. Now, after hearing all of this, Naruto tells Sasuke to go get Sakura, and he'll go retrieve Hinata to get prepared, then meet at the village gate within one hour. Naruto then heads over to his house and tells Hinata that they are going to head out and help look for Hanabi. They then get ready, grabbing all of their ninja tools and weapons and other stuff, and when they are getting the stuff, he sees Hinata reach for a drawer where he has something very important over there, so he can't see her, you know, he can't let her see what's in there. So just when he's about to open it, or just when Hinata's about to actually open the drawer, he stops time and goes to it and opens it to take the two rings that he has in there out. Can't have Hinata ruining the surprise for her and Sakura. Naruto then closes the drawer and resumes time without Hinata realizing. After this, Naruto and Hinata head out and meet up with Sakura and Sasuke as they all head out. Naruto then picks up Hinata, picking her up and putting her on his back, and starts floating above the ground and makes Shadow Clones to hold Sakura and Sasuke so they can speed up the traveling process. And for the first time in two years, Naruto entered 6 past Sage mode and decides to actually use his sensory abilities. Dang, flying still comes natural, huh? Naruto then closes his eyes and extending his senses as far as possible, reaching far outside the village and dresses even outside the land of fire. Further. Naruto thinks this as he pushes his senses out to an even greater degree and feels a chakra level that rivals his way outside the land of fire, but still, you know, he can sense it due to its, you know, its intensity and just due to the fact that 6 past 8 is pretty broken. He starts flying over there hoping to catch his enemy before they fly away, or fly somewhere else since they seem to have similar abilities and relative speed. While on the way, Naruto starts talking with Hinata and Sakura and Sasuke, talking about how this is kind of like old times, all of them going on a mission. And for the past three years, or past two years, whatever you think, um, Naruto's been relatively bored and, you know, only had training to do. He hasn't really been able to, to get, you know, get back to the old grind, nobody to fight against that's really on his level. So Naruto is somewhat excited for this in the way that you would be excited to finally get a good match in or something, right? He's, he's finally ready for some entertainment. He hasn't, he's been bored for a while now. I mean, Naruto has had Hinata as a companion and has Sakura, Sakura and Sasuke as friends, but in terms of like actual engaging in combat, Naruto has been completely and utterly not stimulated. Naruto puts his foot on the gas going full speed, and within a couple of minutes, they traveled a couple thousands of miles to where this Toneri guy is. And when they all land, Naruto turns and deactivates Six Pass Sage Mode and gathers natural energy to use normal Sage Mode for the time being, seeing as how Six Pass Sage Mode does drain him, and there's no point in using that ability as of now. Naruto then realizes that they are being watched, and Naruto turns to find someone that he thought had been he had sealed long ago, Black Zetsu. Black Zetsu is within Toneri's clothing, talking to him and directing him similar to how he does with Kaguya in the original run of Naruto. And Naruto looks confused since he distinctly remembers making a Chibaku Tensei and sealing the people that were back there at that time. Naruto asks how Zetsu is here and Zetsu makes Naruto aware of the fact that because of his pride and own idiocy, Zetsu was able to escape before the Chibaku Tensei was even launched and while Naruto was fighting the four Kage and Akatsuki, he was basically able to get away. And for three years, Zetsu had been planning, biding his time to eventually get back at Naruto. He had been calling out for the Atsutsuki basically, basically giving out an SOS, like asserting or basically alerting the nearest Atsutsuki which happened to be Toneri, that Kage had been sealed and she had been ripe for the taking. I had a plan, eons of ninja history, orchestrated and planned to the letter, but you, Naruto, you were an anomaly because you were born a prodigy, which is unbefitting of a reincarnation of Asura, and you messed up the plan, you messed up everything, 
Destiny's Destiny voice raises in anger a little bit as he's mad that his master plan all came apart just due to the fact that Naruto was an anomaly in the system. He was an outlier. Naruto smiles, saying that he'll oh, just have to foil Zetsu's plan once again and make sure that this time he'll either kill him completely or seal him within a meteor. Zetsu then says that he's amping basically Toneri, making him even stronger than he was before, and Naruto is worried about this just because, you know, this guy was pretty strong before, he's wondering what he's going to pull out of his hat now. Naruto, though, just says that he's just going to have to end this really quickly, and just when he's about to clasp his hands together, making a six-pass Shibaku Tensei, Toneri blitzes Naruto, punching Naruto in the stomach and knocking him to the ground, and knocking the wind out of him simultaneously. This actually surprises both Sasuke and Sakura, and even Hinata, as they were all not expecting Naruto to be knocked down so easily. And then, Toneri punches Sasuke and Sakura, knocking them away from him, and Toneri drops Hanabi, who is now missing her eyes, and Toneri grabs Hinata, saying that she'll make a good way. Sakura is the first to actually get up as she has 100 healings activated already, recovering from the attack, and she jumps up, hitting Toneri in the head, sending him down to the ground with a bit large crash. Sakura now has actually got a major amp as well. Sakura is actually very, very strong at this point in time. She's actually physically stronger than Naruto, even when he has Sage Mode activated. Although, you know, Biju Sage Mode does outclass her in terms of raw strength. In fact, Sakura is actually relative to a Sage Mode Renegon Naruto, which is a pretty impressive feat for her at this time. Even though she wouldn't scale to a Biju Sage Mode or a Six Pass Naruto, scaling to a Renegon, basically a Renegon Sage Mode Naruto is still pretty impressive for her, right? Now, he then, after, you know, Toneri picks Hinata up once again, Sakura realizes that if she keeps on hitting him, Toneri will just use Hinata as a shield, and this makes Naruto furious as he leaps right at Toneri, entering KCM in the process, but still, Toneri is able to dodge and kick Naruto to the ground, and Naruto creates a crater with his body as he lays in the ground, reaching up towards Hinata, and then Toneri sends a true-seeking orb that explodes in Naruto's face, knocking Naruto out. Naruto wakes up minutes after being slammed into the ground and being blown up by a true singing orb by Toneri, and he notices that the moon is much bigger than it was before, than when he went to sleep or passed out. And Naruto realizes that Toneri has sent one of the moons at Earth, and Naruto gets up, almost instantly alert, and looks around seeing Sasuke charging up a Chidori ready to obliterate the moon. Naruto gets up, entering Biju Sage Mode, and tells Sakura to get Hinabi out of there, get her to a safe place. Naruto then makes a Razen Shuriken and changes the nature style to lava and tells Sasuke to take out the moon and he'll go for Toneri right after. Sakura asks what she's supposed to do besides save Hanabi and Naruto says that she has to catch Hinata when she comes through the portal. Sakura, knowing what Naruto is talking about since she is well aware of Sasuke's space time ninjutsu, says that she'll be ready to catch her once she gets saved. Sasuke then leaps at the moon with the Chidori in hand and stabs his right hand right into the moon and with the lightning it travels across the entire moon then explodes. Sasuke then pulls all of the moon fragments to him using Bancho Tenin and makes the Amaterasu cloak to burn and disintegrate all of the fragments, basically obliterating them, not making any fragments of the moon come directly towards Earth, except for one meteorite that's coming right down towards Sakura and Hanabi, and although Sasuke does care for Sakura and Naruto does too, they are both aware that Sakura is strong enough to, do, to obliterate any of these little meteorites that seem to be coming towards her, so Sakura, charging up a lot of chakra in her fist, punches it and completely obliterates it using her monstrous strength. Naruto then leaps off of Sasuke's shoulder who is still in the air, and this launches him to the second moon which Toneri is on, now on, and Naruto throws his lava style Razen Shuriken at Toneri, and upon releasing it, Toneri just catches it with his bare hands, stopping the rotation of the Razen Shuriken completely, and making Naruto wonder why Toneri is strong. He then realizes that Black Zetsu was actually not lying and is amping Toneri's body and is taking control, and that's why his, this bow is so crazy, because it's an amped Toneri. Nar Naruto then lands on the moon himself, and Naruto looks for Hinata and sees her in his arms. Naruto then stops time, grabs Hinata from him, and runs backwards, asking Sasuke to teleport her back down to Earth so she can finally stop holding back, or he can stop finally holding back for her and go all out. Sasuke complies with this, making a portal and sending her through, although this does make him a little bit drained. Naruto then finally, not feeling as restricted by weak people being near him, actually yells out in a battle cry, releasing all of his power, or at least a good majority of it. His KCM2 cloak comes on him, his 6 pass sage mode appears, and he finally, and Naruto's Renegon finally enters a 9 Tomoe state in his ra rage and anger for attacking him, not necessarily for his, his rage for taking Hinata, and although there is a shred of excitement in there, he's a little, he's, he, can't, he can't lie, he's a little giddy to fight someone this strong. Now, the Renegon has finally evolved to its final evolution, and Sasuke gets out his EMS and Renegon and starts showing its Tomoe, getting ready to finally go all out against an opponent. And then, on Toneri's side, he starts changing as well. 
the blue cloak that he got from the Titan Sagon amp and the black true seeking Europe start warping and changing. And Zetsu summons his mother. Not from a Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails like in the original, but Zetsu actually summons Kaguya from the body of Toneri. This essentially adds their strength on together, making a Toneri slash Kaguya fusion. This is pretty broken, I should tell you. Naruto seeing this, cracks his neck wondering if he's actually going to get a good fight this time, and he figures out his answer when Kaguya swings her moon splitting attack right at Naruto. In response, Naruto casually catches the attack and yawns at Kaguya saying that she's quite weak. That sentiment is actually taken back when she blitzes Naruto and stabs Naruto with a true seeking orb rod, and Naruto goes flying backwards. Naruto doesn't disintegrate since he's able to actually interact with these things, and he actually stops the time on the true seeking orb, keeping its effect from basically turning him into dust. Naruto then takes it out and tells Kaguya to prepare herself, and Naruto disappears and Kaguya and attacks Kaguya, narrowly missing a good hit onto Kaguya's head. Naruto then continues to barrage Kaguya slash Toneri with attacks, all of them seeming to just barely miss as she's able to get the drop on him in terms of speed. And in the midst of this, Sasuke realizes something. Naruto isn't using any jutsu whatsoever, at least none that could potentially blow up the moon or Sasuke on it. Why won't Naruto use jutsu? He keeps thinking about this until it dawns on Sasuke. He is holding Naruto back. Naruto can't go all out because he, yeah, like, if he could and he would, he would destroy the moon. But Sasuke will be hurt by any large jutsu that Naruto throws as well, so Sasuke decides to, that he needs to do something about this. He grabs Naruto just when he's about to attack again, and tells Naruto that he only needs to get hit with an instant, or he needs to make contact with Kaguya for just a mere instant. An instant will be enough and he'll be able to actually pull this off. And Naruto, trusting Sasuke, lets Kaguya make physical contact with Naruto just for a split second, and they all teleport away from the moon into a different dimension that Sasuke is basically hijacked. After teleporting into the new dimension, Naruto looks around trying to gauge his surroundings and sees that Sasuke is kneeling down, exhausted from forcibly pulling Naruto and Kaguya into a different dimension that wasn't even him. In fact, he hijacked Kaguya's dimension, which made it even harder as he was forcing her into one of her own dimensions. Naruto keeps looking around and sees Kaguya, who now has a Tensei on Chakra Cloak, along with a fusion between Toneri, Kaguya, and Black Zetsu. Black Zetsu being the brains, Toneri being the host, and Kaguya adding a lot of extra power to that body. Naruto then runs at Kaguya, leaps at her, hoping to kill her swiftly while Kaguya seems to be confused, but Kaguya dodges its attack and shoots a killing bone ash at Naruto, and almost kills him in fact, but Naruto is able to switch places with it, with the attack flying into Naruto, but surviving, only like only taking minimal damage. Naruto then asks the four tails to send his chakra to a boiling point and increase his strength to ungodly levels, and Naruto's chakra gets amped even greater. Naruto then makes nine shadow clones, who all make raws and shurikens of different natures and nature styles, and they throw them at Kaguya. Once they all reach her, they make a huge explosion that sends Kaguya flying through the smoke, and Naruto, knowing that it will only be amped for a few more moments, makes the best of it and stops time, hitting Kaguya with a flurry of attacks, in fact ripping off one of her arms in the process using a true seeking sword. Then, still in stop time, Naruto makes a massive Rasen Shuriken that dwarves mountains in terms of its size and he slams around to Kaguya, as time continues to move forward normally. Naruto jumps backwards, breathing heavily after stopping time for a good 30 seconds and using many chakra draining jutsu. Naruto is only barely able to maintain any of the amps that he has. Naruto then looks at Kaguya and sees that although she only has one arm, she is otherwise completely unscathed. For some reason, she was able to take most of the attacks, although, you know, surviving, she does take somewhat damage, although it's only minimal compared to what Naruto intended to do onto her. Naruto then comes up with an idea as Kaguya shoots a killing bone ash at him. Naruto clads his left arm in true seeking orbs and makes an orb that perfectly fits around his arm, and to his surprise, it not only benefits his strength, but it also strengthens his defense exponentially and allows him to tank the bone killing ash, at least to the arm. Naruto realizing that he can also amp his attacks with his clad, basically the clad true seeking orbs, he clads his whole body in true seeking orbs and makes a true seeking armor. Similar to how Sasuke's Bijou Susano looks, where it has like part of the purple as the armor and the lightning coming out of it. Basically, Naruto is partially covered in a black armor of the true seeking orbs, and a blinding gold light shines from Naruto's armor as he charges Chakra into one of his eyes and uses and the unique ability of the nine to mold Rinnegan, Time Bind activates. Naruto stares at Kaguya, and Naruto forces his will upon Kaguya, and pressing his own dojutsu ability onto Kaguya's, and Naruto is able to bind Kaguya within time. This means that Kaguya not only cannot move, but every function that Kagi has is also stopped, meaning that she isn't conscious at all of the at all, and this is completely frozen in time. Every function, her breathing is stopped, her heart beating is stopped, her ability to reason or even think or see has stopped, she is completely stopped in time. 
Naruto, in doing this, needs to take a deep breath as he is charging up. Naruto then has to use his new ability, which drains him of chakra at an exponential rate, at dr dramatically draining him. In fact, just due to the strain of using it at all, Naruto's ears and eyes are bleeding. Even his nose is bleeding. As Naruto takes it further, he clasps his hands together, about to use a jutsu that drains him of life force and actually shortens his lifespan, especially when put together with such a chakra draining attack as Time Bind. Alright Kage, it's time to end this. Naruto then charges as much chakra as possible and rushes the frozen Kage, but just when he makes contact with her, his his binding ends, his time binding just stops. He runs out of chakra for that and Kage stabs Naruto with a killing bone ash. As Naruto hits her with the six patch of Akutense, they kind of stalemate and Kage gets sealed. And Naruto sees something that Shibaku not only makes a moon look small in terms of size, but it rivals something as, a, as large as a sun in its scope. Naruto doesn't really understand how, but apparently he had enough chakra to do this, sealing Kagi in something that is as large as a sun, at least in terms of its size. Anything smaller, he realizes, and Kagi would have broken out of the ceiling, it not being potent enough to stop her. Now, while he did technically win, Naruto got hit with a killing bone ash, which is slowly killing Naruto. Due to his regen, he's able to somewhat survive it a little bit, um, but he knows that if he doesn't do something soon, he will die. But Naruto then has an idea. Naruto's Renegon reverts back to its sixth Samoe state as he stares at his wound, hoping this will work, and he pulls out the projectile and his Renegon starts spinning counterclockwise, implying that he's actually reversing time within on his own body, similar to how something that he's done previous in other parts of the What If. Now, well, Naruto, you know, was hit with this, he's basically rewinding his body back to a time before he was hit, basically resetting his biological clock, meaning that he was able to survive the attack. But Naruto, after doing this, lays down, completely exhausted from having to fight on that level for the first time in a long time, and after a bit of rest, Naruto gets up, sits down trying to enter Sage Mode, although there isn't much nature energy here to gather, as he realizes, to take in this dimension, since, you know, there's not much nature, there's sand, there's a sun, and that's about it. So he calls on Kurama along with all the other Toad Beasts to help him out in the chakra department, and once he does, he picks up Sasuke, gives him a huge amount of chakra, basically doubling Sasuke's current amount of chakra, and asks Sasuke if he'll actually be able to teleport them back to Earth. And Sasuke shrugs, not knowing himself actually, but luckily, now completely recharged of chakra and full of chakra, Sasuke makes a portal and walks through and they appear on Earth. They then see that they are in the Leaf Village, and Naruto basically being assured, okay, we're, we're safe now. Naruto no longer has the chakra to stand up, doesn't even try to stand up, and Naruto passes out, falling face first into the ground. Now, after Naruto wakes up, he sees that he's in bed in his home, and he sees Hinata and Sakura staring at him with a light shining in his face, seeing if he's alive, seeing if his ir irises or his pupils will dilate, even if he has a concussion or something. Where's Sasuke at? Naruto then worried about this and worried about Sasuke, worried about if he can somehow not make it across forces himself to sit up although he gets dizzy from this and sees Sasuke sitting in a chair in the corner of the room looking at Naruto rather concerned although he doesn't seem concerned for Naruto's safety as of course Naruto would be able to survive something like that. Naruto then looks at Sasuke and knowing that he has a very important question stops time to talk, talk to Sasuke about something that's even more dangerous to, to, than Toneri or Kaguya level threats. He needs to worry about if the surprise was ruined. Did they find the rings? Sasuke shakes his head as he holds both of them up to Naruto, showing him, and Naruto just nods as he lays back down and time continues like Naruto. I'm like Naruto. <laughs> I'm retarded. Time continues like normal. Naruto then forces himself to get up, stands, and walks past Sasuke, getting the ring from him, and basically getting the ring for Hinata. And the two head out for a bit, as Naruto says that he wants to talk to her. Naruto then, in the process, kind of talks to Hinata, letting her know that she's very important to him, and that in that fight, almost about to die, Naruto realized that he does want to spend the rest of his life with Hinata. Sasuke, at the same time, is currently making a very similar speech to Sakura, who is not really aware of what's happening, and she was just in the state of trying to heal someone. She's not really paying too much attention to what Sasuke says until he asks the important question. Naruto and Sasuke both kneel down as they both propose to their respective women, Naruto to Hinata and Sasuke to Sakura, and they both propose at the same time, and of course, they both say yes. We then skip forward to the marriage where we see Naruto and Sasuke both getting married one day after the other, Sasuke getting married first since his wedding would be the least 
you know, the least important one since he's marrying useless, I mean Sakura, and Naruto gets married the day after, marrying the obviously better Hinata, right? Shut up if you think Sakura is better. Anyways, we now skip forward six years in time to see a young Boruto and a young Sarada playing together. While Hinata and Sakura are both pregnant, they both look at their children playing or training or play fighting for a more accurate representation of what they are doing. Now, keep in mind, Sakura is now pregnant as well as Hinata. Hinata is pregnant with Himawari and Sakura is currently pregnant with another Sa one of Sasuke's children. Since Sasuke did not dip, he actually stayed within the village and, you know, things happen when you're both in the village and married. Naruto and Sasuke then come to watch to see how their children are interacting with each other and while they are play fighting, Boruto's eyes turn purple and this weird, this weird dojutsu appears when Sarada steals a toy of his. Boruto then extends his hand, pulling the toy from Sarada without even touching it, realizing that Boruto just used basically Boncho Taining on a very small degree. Naruto looks at Sasuke and they both look at each other and Boruto just looks at Naruto giggling, happy that he was able to use this. And all of the parents jaws drop as Boruto seems to have something like the Renegon, although Naruto has a sneaking suspicion that this would put even the Renegon to shame. And Naruto looks up at Sasuke smile looks up to see Sasuke smiling. And Hinata and Sakura just look at each other, knowing that Boruto will not only grow up to be a mess, but a disappointment. And that everybody is where I'm gonna end part twelve to the What If Naruto the Renegon series, or What If Naruto had the Renegon Naruto the Last. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button because this like goal is especially high and I actually think I'll be able to take a, you know, a nice break from this since I have to double down on the Naruto Ten Tail series. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video, like I said, consider sub like, you know, like the video first of all. And then if you're new to the channel and haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on more what if Naruto had like content, right? I'm also working on a large project that I actually, you know, want to talk about maybe in uh, further detail in maybe a later video or something like that maybe a live stream i don't know but i do appreciate the support as always guys i don't know why i'm going specifically long in this outro but whatever i i love you guys i appreciate you um just felt like saying that in a video so as always hope you enjoyed the video and as always guys this is anime x signing off join my discord and my twitter and my instagram bye